we're not going to do anything about makeup or uh, dance routines today. We're going to, uh, I'm going to talk to you about my, one of my favorite cars, the Buick Roadmaster. Um, this one is a particular uh, 1996 Roadmaster estate wagon with the wood trim delete, which I quite like. And uh, I thought I'd show you mine. And uh, if you show me yours, so it'd be fair. So we feel free to show me yours if you feel like it. <laughs> so here we go. So uh, today we're going to do a long promise video on my 1996 Buick Roadmaster station wagon. And um, I'm going to show you my license plate. So you can track me down and, you know, and find out where I live and throw rocks at my house if you want. Um, this is my little KG Buick. One of my friends looked at this license plate and he says, what was Buick taken? How come you had to put an L in there? I said, because it's a Buick and it's blue. I guess he didn't understand my, my sense of humor. So... Here we go. Some of the features of the station wagon. Here's the uh, net where you can put your mangoes and bananas and stuff in it for lunch, stuff like that. It's, uh, it will hold things inside this area. That's pretty cool. I like it. And uh, if you're smuggling uh, illegal aliens from uh, from south of the border or from Canada. You could smuggle them from Canada too, I guess. Got a little thing they can hide and they can, they can hide in here. That way, they, you know, you want to be a humanitarian about it. You want to keep them out of the sun. Some people don't care about the people they smuggle. They just let them suffer. But no, they even uh, have little places. It's not really a cup holder, but they have little bins here they can put their drinks and everything. It's uh, convenient for them, so. I'm uh, one of the most popular coyotes uh, in Arizona because of my transportation accommodations. So, pardon my butt. Okie dokie. You got your uh, storage area. I'm told, I never tried it myself, but a, uh, two, a uh, sheet of plywood should be able to fit in here. That's what they say. And the, here we go with the famous rear-facing seat. Three or four Texans could be pretty chipper back here, I think. Now, if they're from Austin, you probably fit five of them. Um, if it's the, the girls from Beaumont, Texas, maybe one. So it depends upon what part of Texas people are from. Uh, but uh, this is the part that a lot of people feel very nostalgic about when it comes to wagons. When they're a kid, they get to sit back here and flip off the car and f following them, things like that. Um, also, I happen to have a CD changer here. So the short person has to sit on the uh, this side. Over here is a uh, storage area, which I keep some emergency equipment. Like, uh, well, uh, the jumper cables, a uh, portable compressor and a bottle jack, a couple of rags, kind of nice to have. And then over on this other side, the opposite side, is where the spare tire and the tools for um, jacking up the car and everything reside. I'm not going to pull that apart, it's kind of pain in the butt. Also, what's really cool about this is... This is for the passenger to step in and out. It makes it easier for them to get in and out. So that's kind of a neat thing. Oh, 
I'm gonna put let me put this seat back down. Sitting under here. The uh, seat is locked in. If you want to pull it back down, you have to. Uh... Ah, there you go. It's kind of neat. I don't know. Now the Roadmaster wagon came out the same time as the Caprice wagon, what was redesigned for 91, came out. And initially the wagon was not available in limited trim, whereas the sedan, um, which came out in 1992, was available in limited trim. But by 1995, and also for 96, the Roadmaster could be had in limited trim, which included better seats and a, former, a few more standard features like memory seat and heated seat, and had a lot to do with the seats. And the one main big difference on the front seat is on the limiteds, whether it be the sedan or the wagon, the bottom and the back were split. There were uh, separate frames so and when you tilt one it didn't affect the other so it was all independently adjustable on the non uh the, on the standard models the back was and the and the bottom were all one frame and the back was uh, adjusted manually rather than with power uh motors the seat, no, the, the um, inside on the standard, whether it be wagon or a sedan, the seat patterns are exactly the same throughout uh, 91 to 96. Of course, the back seat on the wagon is uh, slightly different construction because you can, uh, you can fold it down, so it's uh, not quite as um, padded but the seat patterns uh, the same. You can fold it down. More on the interiors. The door panels and the dash are of one design between 91 and 93. The limited sedan of 92 and 90 to 94, the seating pattern is the same, but the door panels and dash has uh, been updated. And then 95 and 96 limited, they completely re redesigned the seats to be the more um, orthopedic style seating, which actually I think the 92 to 94 limited seats are the most comfortable, even more than the 95 and 6. I think the weakest point of the 94 to 96 uh, Roadmasters is the door panels. These break off, uh, these fall off really easily. Um, they get uh, cracks and they start rattling and making noise. I, I much prefer the door panels on the 91 to 93 uh, Roadmasters. Also the dash is better on the 91 to 93 because they have uh, more gauges, oil pressure gauge, and uh, I just think they're a little bit more useful gauge package with them. But uh, That's not quite as big of a deal as the door panels, as far as I'm concerned. Another mention, the wagons come standard with aluminum wheels, whereas sedans, that was an option. However, the 91 to 94 wagon aluminum wheels 
had much deeper scallops. And the sedans had this style. But in 95, the, the, whether it be wagon or a sedan, they had the same style, which was originally the sedan style. More minutia. Another interesting thing about the last year for these, the 96, the collector's edition, is the center caps on these aluminum wheels, the lettering is in gold, whereas all the previous years, the lettering is in silver. All 96 Roadmasters are collector's edition, so it doesn't really make that much of a difference. Um, if it's a collector's edition, it's, that means it's the 96. They're all collector's editions. Okay, uh, the Buick Roadmaster wagon came out in 1991 along with the uh, newly designed Caprice wagon. And the body panels and all the sheet metal were identical between the two cars. The trim in the interior and things like that, uh, the grill, a couple of things were differentiate the two. But when the Roadmaster sedan came out for the 1992 model year, um, they decided to redesign the front clip. And it does not, uh, it's completely different than the Roadmaster wagon. Uh, the difference being the hood shape, rather than being rather smooth and, and, and rounded, has a, uh, a, a, right, a raised center, so the, the hood is a little bit higher in the middle, and it's got a sculpted look, which is kind of hard to see on, with the white light here. Um, also, the grill, rather than being almost rectangular, flares out towards the bottom, and the headlights accommodate that new shape. And the fenders also are slightly more uh, square. Rather than coming around and, and smoothly rounding out to almost a point, they remain a little bit higher and a little bit more squared off. So it's very distinctive on the sedan versus the uh, wagon. Uh, while, while we're here, we're going to mention the collector's edition. A lot of people who, when they, when they sell them on eBay or whatever, they mention, it's a collector's edition. Well, Buick used that marketing technique to kind of um, mention, in a subtle way, that this would be the last year for the big B-body V8 rear-wheel drive full-framed uh, cars and uh, the Arlington factory in which they were built was switching over to exclusively manufacturing SUVs like the Tahoe and the Suburban. So it's not a collector's edition, doesn't make a 96 Roadmaster, whether it be wagon or sedan, anything special in the 96 model year. It's just another indication that you have a 96 Roadmaster rather than a 95. So that's it. The sheet metal on the Roadmaster wagon is identical to the Caprice wagon. The differences being um, some of the trim and how the trim is on the side. The grill is different. Not just because it says Buick, but on the sh on the Chevy, the uh, the filler panel and bumper is straight across here, and uh, of course the grill is a little bit shorter. So that's the styling difference. That from the front you can tell it's a Buick, even if you can't read, you can tell it's a Buick due to the uh, the dip here in the bumper. You may have noticed that this doesn't have any of that fake wood on it. And that's why I bought this car. I think it looks so much better without that fake wood. Of course, uh, some people like the, um, the fake wood because it, it's more of a nostalgic thing for them. Uh, most wagons had it, no matter what the manufacturer was, uh, Mopar, Ford, or GM. <laughs> most wagons had some sort of fake wood on it. 
The condition of the of this car was, I think, uh, under 94,000 miles. Um, pretty decent. I mean, it's got a few scratches on it. Uh, the worst being this deep one here, which you can see from a mile away. Um, I think this uh, previous owner probably used it for uh, car camping and probably scratched it going in and out a few places, but that's just my guess. Another feature about these, I'll, uh, I'll get on the other side here real quick. The skylight is a little bit reminiscent of the uh, 60s Buick and Olds Vista Dome. Ah, there it is. Uh, it's kind of nice. It's a nice feature. The uh, 64 to 69, I think, Oldsmobile and Oldsmobile um, Cutlass Vista Cruiser and the Buick Skylark Sport Wagon had the Vista Dome, which was, uh, it had more glass on the side too, but uh, anyway, it's kind of cool. This particular wagon um, features the trailer towing package, which does not include a towing hitch. A lot of people expect it to include a towing hitch. The towing hitch is an aftermarket feature, but the towing package uh, on the Buick, for 94 to 96 anyway, um, they had a towing package in the earlier ones too, but I don't remember all the specs on that. But the LT1 equipped 94 to 96 Roadmaster with the V92 towing package featured a uh, little bit stronger shifting transmission, heavier duty, duty cooling, uh, a, a higher output alternator, stiffer suspension, um, higher rate springs and stiffer shocks. And uh, instead of a 256 gear rear end, it has a 293 rear gear for uh, pulling the being able to pull more weight. However, I did a modification to it. The towing package came with a mechanical fan, and I didn't like mechanical fans because one, they make more noise. And two, whenever you have to work on the front of the car, you got more stuff to pull apart. But the evidence that this has, was a towing package with a mechanical fan is this uh, metal piping for the lower radiator hose is still intact where the regular car would just all be rubber. And two, you can see the extra pulley that would drive the mechanical fan is still here. The, um, someone makes a, I don't remember the name of the company, I'm sorry, but someone makes a wiring harness where you have to take apart the fuse box to to rewire and uh, put in the, the clips and everything for the new wiring harness and then I added a primary uh, electric fan whereas the mechanical fan version would only have the secondary fan over here. So I prefer this setup better. I've done this to all of the towing package um, Roadmasters I've ever owned, including my son-in-law's, which we will feature one day, and we'll also feature my daughter's uh, Roadmaster uh, one day on our videos. I don't think of anything else I can mention about the car. Um, oh, I want to mention a little bit more about the interiors. The standard interior, which this has, it doesn't, it's not a limited, has this particular seat pattern. Like I say, it goes all the way back to 91, this seat pattern. But a lot of people think that the limited automatically means leather seats and the standard automatically means cloth seats. This is not true. 
You can get cloth or leather in either the standard basic models or the limited models. So, in fact, uh, the 94 limited I sold my son-in-law uh, has cloth seats and my daughter's uh, limited uh, sedan has cloth seats, but they're both uh, have limited design seat patterns. So, another thing, the side cladding here on all wagons from 91 to 96 is uh, stainless steel. The sedan side cladding, slightly different design, is stainless steel from 92 to 94, but starting in 95 and for 96 it became plastic uh, side cladding that's uh, got the chrome treatment to it. So that's a different so you can interchange some of these parts between the sedans and the limited or the uh, wagons, and some in some years you cannot change the the side trim. So even the clips are different between the three different variations. Yeah, this is uh, again more fact oriented and than my typical. Uh, videos, but these are my favorite cars. I've owned 86 cars in my life, r ranging from cars from the 50s, cars that I went to the junkyard and paid $60, $70 for and drove them off and used them for the winters in Wisconsin because I didn't want to drive my very nice 57 Thunderbirds in the winter, of course. So I've, I've had cars ranging from rust bucket junkers all the way to pretty nice I would say number two level, almost number one in a few cases, uh, uh, cars. So uh, of all the cars I've owned, uh, as far as all around satisfaction have been the Roadmasters and the Fleetwoods with the LT1 engine. And what I mean by all around is, no, they're not the best handling. No, they're not the best riding I ever had. No, they're not the fastest I ever had. No, they're not the most fuel efficient I ever had but they're 80% of everything. They do everything at least 80% well or better. So you get, you get excellence in every aspect of the car. So um, with all my experience with cars, and of course I've driven a lot of cars from my mother's cars, my father's cars, my stepfather's cars, plus you know, 86 cars that I've owned personally. If uh, I could only have one car, it would be a Buick Roadmaster, and to tell you the truth, the sedan would be what I preferred. The second choice would be the, uh, the Cadillac Fleetwood. So, uh, so I have to admit, though, I never owned a foreign car. So, you know, the only one that ever interests me uh, that's a car that wasn't made in the United States or designed in, from a United States uh, company would be a 69 to 71 Mercedes 280 SL. I think they're really, really nice cars. So, But I've never driven one, so I don't know um, if I'd like it or not, but I really like how they look. My preference is American car. It doesn't have to be full size. I used to like uh, Skylarks and the more mid-sized cars, Chevelles. Uh, but I've, now that I'm older and fatter, I need more room between me and the steering wheel. And uh, I like the more comfort-oriented cars. Um, I like to have a full frame, rear-wheel drive, and V8. That's what I prefer. So, anyway, there's exceptions. I've had cars that weren't that, but that's what I prefer. Any questions? You in the back, any questions? <laughs> okay. See you later. For those of you who have tuned in to my 1970 Buick Electra video, you remember the beautiful Santa Catalina Mountains.
Here in Arizona, they uh, they post signs about the bridge being wet because of uh, maybe the morning condensation. Of course, the bridge will be more likely to get wet because it's an exposure. Plus, usually bridges are around areas that have water, even though in Tucson, <laughs> most of the time there is no water. But I find it kind of interesting, being from Wisconsin, that uh, you have to be warned. <laughs> uh. Yeah, if there's snow, in, if, if you can see snow on the mountain peaks, people will drive like uh, they're going to slide off the road, even though the road is perfectly dry. You know, driving these LT1 engines around town, which I have five of them, I guess, I get 15 miles a gallon around town with it. Uh, not bad. Um, on the highway, uh, different ones do better than others. The worst ones get me about 22, and the best ones get me about 27 or 28. So, in fact, one time I got a tank 30 miles a gallon with which is very unusual. It's, it's not typical. 25 is more reasonable what to expect on the highway with these. Of course, I do tend to drive around 80 miles an hour, so I'm sure we're, if we were still uh, in the 55 mile hour laws back when those cars were built, they'd probably get much better gas mileage. But heck, I drive uh, 55 through the school zones, so. <laughs> That's it.